this is our uh, this is our next next webinar about about object oriented programming. I keep forgetting the number of it. This one is uh, 55th. So we've done 55, 54 webinars so far, and most of them were about obj about object oriented programming. Some of them were about management. Some of them were a few of them were about uh, investments, I believe. And uh, this one we're doing them about object oriented programming for the last few years. So this one will be about encapsulation and why I think uh, there is a problem with encapsulation and how I suggest this problem can be fixed, probably in future programming languages, not in Java or C++ or Python, which we work with right now, but in the future. And the question is how it's going to be fixed and what exactly is the problem. So I will try to explain you my uh, understanding of it. I actually wrote a number of blog posts about that over the last few years where I advocated for uh, objects being designed the way that data stay as much as possible within the borders of the object. So we must prevent, in my opinion, uh, situations where objects let their data to get out and then being populated over the rest of the code. This probably, in most cases, uh, is a problem for, for maintainability of the code. And I'll show you the practical example. So let's see, this is the example from the two blog posts which I wrote. Uh, which I wrote about this and which you can find in the uh, show notes below. Uh, let me check whether you can hear me and see me clearly. So in the chat, say a few words if you can see my face and if you can hear me, because it's always a question, always a problem to set up the webinar properly, because I have a camera, I have sound, there's so, so many equipment. And sorry for the noise which you hear, like a little, like small noise that's coming from the computer. I don't know how to stop it. Probably I need a better laptop I don't know so can you hear me can you see me just say a few words please and then we'll go into the the Java example which I wanted to to share with you okay I assume you you can hear me okay you want the, the sound to be better to be higher okay I can make it a little bit higher I think this one is now it's much better, right? Okay. All right, so let's go. Um, so here is the, the Java code. The Java code, which uh, which is quite simple. Let's say it's a piece of it's a it's a small class which uh, contains a private uh, contains a public actually public attribute which is called degrees. The class is about the temperature. So this probably is uh, a temperature uh, of, uh, of something. And the degrees is the, the integer number, the positive or negative number, which is the temperature. And then we start using this class and we say temperature t, t is the instance of the class, and then we take the temperature from the class, let's say t, t dot degrees equals to 90. So we set the amount there into the class and then sometime later we can do t degrees I actually wrote that code already uh, so we do much later we do uh, reading this so we say uh, the, the water will start boiling at the degrees in, in, in X amount degrees. So now we, we know that the water that water starts boiling at 100 degrees by Celsius Celsius and uh, that's why we can easily decrement, we can take 100 and then um, subtract the degrees. And then we get the amount, the number of um, degrees which is left till water starts boiling. Uh, Yeah, I'm checking your chat and some of you are saying that I need more volume. Some of you are saying that volume has to go lower. So I don't know how to satisfy both of you guys. So I will keep the, I will a little bit adjust, adjust the volume. So now it's better. The noise from the, from the laptop, it's a total, uh, it's a mystery for me. I don't know how to deal with that. The laptop is, 
um, you know, it's running the, the OBS software, it's running the, the YouTube streaming uh, channel, so I send the data to YouTube. And for some reason, it takes too much GPU and CPU power, so the CPU and CPU, they go uh, to higher temperatures and the, 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 the cooler starts running and this is the noise that's what's coming from i i checked i you know i'm i don't know why it's i don't know how to solve this so probably i need a new computer or something like this okay so now it's okay so here's the real real case real example with java code which works it looks okay but there's a problem the problem i'm not going to tell you about some functionality problems on this webinar these problems are not about functionality everything works but uh there are maintainability problems. There are problems with the code which is hard to maintain in the future, this particular code. Why? The problem is this with this data. So the data uh, which jumps out of the class in this line, T degrees, it's not anymore a temperature. It's not anymore, uh, it's just a number here. So we lose, as they say, semantic of the data. We don't know exactly. Well, in this line, we may say that the semantic is still there because we know it's degrees. So we can assume that uh, we understand that uh, uh, that's, uh, it's, re it's related to the temperature. And degrees is probably the degrees in Celsius. But we're not sure that this is Celsius because the information about Celsius or not was probably stored here. For example, we, we the comment could be placed here. This is the temperature in Celsius. However, the information about Celsius or not Celsius, because it could be, for example, uh, Fahrenheit. If I if I didn't make a mistake here, let me check because I always. There you go. So there are two options. Well, there are many, there are more options here, but at least two options. The temperature could be in Celsius or it could be in uh, Celsius. Even here I made a mistake. Uh, it could be in Celsius or it could be in Fahrenheit. We choose this one. We prefer this option. But the decision was made within the borders of this class. So only inside this class we know what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, system is used for the degrees. When the number goes out of the class, it's not anymore, this information is not here anymore. And if we make an assumption, like here we made an assumption in these two lines, in these three lines, we made an assumption that degrees are in Celsius. That's why the formula is exactly like this, 100 minus 10 degrees. If we would make a different assumption here and say that that would be Fahrenheit, then the formula would be different right so the decision is made outside of the class temperature and if tomorrow some programmer you know this code goes somewhere else like it's far away from us and the programmer comes in and jumps into this class and looks at this code not seeing the rest of it and just looks at this and says yeah it's celsius but fahrenheit makes more sense for us sense for us now and the decision is made here but the programmer will not know how many places in the code actually made this assumption? So this is this is what happened in C in C code actually in many many other C and other um, pr pr procedural languages before uh, the idea of encapsulation was introduced. That was the very typical problem that uh, the data was uh, spread over the source code, and the semantic of the data was hard to find. So it was not possible to, to say that we, we make the decision about the, 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 the nature, the semantic of the data in this particular place. And then this semantic, this information about what the data means goes over the entire, uh, the entire software. If you, if you go back to languages like assembly, like very primitive languages, low level languages, they have no idea about semantic at all. I mean, it's not possible to, spec to attach any semantic to any particular piece of data because data in assembly that's just uh, a register for example and the register is ax bx cx just no semantic there just temporal temporary uh the location of of the data and it was not possible uh in assembly to you know to specify the semantic you just need to know where what it is there 
and it's your responsibility to know properly how to deal with this data. And then they introduced object-oriented programming and encapsulation. And they said, how about we encapsulate data here and we put some borders around the data. So these things, these, um, these uh, brackets, they're actually borders around the data. So they, they kind of, I mean, you can, you can treat them as, bo as, as um, the, the borders of the scope of the data, where the semantic is. So a much better idea here would be to make it private. So we not let, that's the idea. That's, now we're getting into the implementation of encapsulation. So the idea is very good. The idea is perfect. Like it, it looks on the paper, in the, in the theory, in theory, the idea looks amazing because we say that uh, what happens in the class, we keep it in the class. And when something goes out, then it's only something which is, um, which is, which, um, even, even in theory, it's difficult to formulate what is encapsulation. So they say that there are, there are a number of you know, definitions of encapsulations, but uh, some are saying, for example, I, in, in my blog post, I quote that encapsulation, for example, Grady Butch uh, said in, in his book, very famous book about object-oriented programming, that the process of encapsulation is the process of hiding all the secrets of an object then to not contribute to its essential characteristics. So in this case, probably essential characteristic of temperature is actually the temperature. And the secret is probably the information about what exactly do we use, Celsius or Fahrenheit. So we need some process of hiding the secrets and only exposing essential characteristics. It's just words. It's hard to actually put these words into practice. Like what exactly does it mean in Java? How can we, in this particular example, how can we do it? How can I hide these degrees so that nobody do this? So that nobody makes this assumption about uh, the degrees and nobody use this formula here because this formula actually is an assumption which is making, which, which is made not by myself. I'm, I'm the developer of this class temperature. And I didn't make this assumption. I, I, well, I don't want, no, I, I don't want you, a user of my class, to make this assumption. I want me to be in charge of this. I want to be in charge of the, I want to decide whether water starts boiling at 100 or, I don't know, 200 something for the Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. So in Java, it's practically impossible. Well, there is no explicit instruments in Java, like mechanisms, which will tell you how to do encapsulation. Some people say that this is encapsulation. They say, how about we, well, there were getters and setters introduced, invented. Let's call it invented. Uh, and it's possible to say they make this variable private. That's the first step for encapsulation. Not real encapsulation, but still it's called encapsulation. And then you do, uh, then you do void set degrees and then, for example, like this. Yeah, you can set degrees and then you can probably get degrees. This is the primitive way, which doesn't really do anything. As you can say, you don't need to be a real scientist to, to, to see that these two methods, they don't really make any diff they don't really improve the situation anyhow you still you still don't understand well instead of these degrees i will get i will say get degrees and what changes nothing and instead of these t degrees i will set i will do set degrees and nothing really will um, will get better so we have exactly the same picture however we can say well this is one step forward which is absolutely uh, not helpful but we can make a better step forward and say let's for example we do it like this that will be more. That will be more appropriate way to to deal with this because in this case, here, uh, here, uh, the developer has the semantic of the data, and it has the 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 proper information about the data. So now we can say that. Yes, we do encapsulate the secrets, so we don't know exactly what is this. So it may be Fahrenheit, it may be Celsius. No, it, the developer of the temperature class will decide how to keep the information here. And then the user of the class will just take it in exactly, you know, in exactly what needs to be taken in Celsius 
and just use it uh, in this way. So that is probably better, you know, better approach. And here we do set degrees again in Celsius. And this is helpful, probably. However, however, well, in this particular small case, maybe this is the end of the story. I'm just thinking right now because I, I, I wasn't thinking this direction. I just made it up right now, this idea of this using this uh, suffix here. So I'm thinking uh, what is wrong with that? And it looks to me like everything is OK right now. Right. So we basically we put the semantic into the name. So by the name of the method, we expose all the necessary information and programmers will not make a mistake, most probably here. So they will not make a mistake in this line because everybody will see that what exactly I'm talking about. However, in more complex scenarios, in more complex classes, when we're not dealing with just a simple number and a simple temperature, then it's hard to it's hard to put all the information into the into the method, and um, and usually people uh, and usually people don't find a way how to explain what's getting out what kind of data is jumping out of the class and they just let the users of the class to make the assumptions and decisions about the about the data and if i'm saying that if the class would be more complex like not just the temperature but something more complex then it will not be possible in most cases it will not be possible to do it this way so to explain fully what exactly is getting out what exactly you expose from the class and it will be inevitable. The situations will be inevitable when users will make this decision. And if we go even further, I can show you the, the, the what, what the problem grows is when you uh, not only do it in, in a simple formula, but you, for example, take it from here and then you pass it to, I don't know, for example, you have some machine, some, um, some I don't know, some robot, for example, which needs... Uh, uh, which needs the temperature to be set and then we do I don't know run it if uh, let's say set temperature and we inject the temperature there as degrees and then it goes into this robot class and stays there for and uh, yeah, and, the, and now this robot class depends on the number which is injected there. And now we have a dependency between the, the robot class, the robot object, and the number which we took from another class. So the robot doesn't depend on the temperature class. So the robot has no ability, has no interconnection uh, with the class. Instead, the class, these two classes, these two objects, they communicate through data. And because they communicate through data, they have no ability to, to, to understand each other on the level of their interfaces. So we sort of block, we make the communication between them not rich enough. We make it too thin, too primitive because they communicate only through a simple integer so that was like a rich object temperature where you can add more methods you can add more whatever you can add like what what the object can have methods methods and uh, some maybe uh, interfaces here maybe uh, uh, parent object something like this some class hierarchy so it's it's enough information for the robot class to understand what's there but instead we instead of giving the temperature here we take the data and put the data in there instead of connecting them uh, class to class. So a better way, what I'm suggesting is the better way would to do it to be like, to, to make it like this. Again, I'm not saying anything new here because it's very well known principle. I think this, uh, yeah, it's a pretty well known principle. I think it's kind of close to inversion of control or something where you actually, instead of uh, being in charge of this, uh, class you instead of uh, 
So in this line, so if you compare two lines, like this. So on the first line here, we, we are not in charge. So we, me as a programmer who is writing this code, so in, this, in these two lines, like when I'm staying here on this line, I don't know whether a robot will be interested in getting the degrees or not. So I'm not telling the ro I'm not, you know, making this, I'm not explicitly taking the number and giving to the robot, and I don't know when exactly it's going to happen. So control is not mine. I think it's related to this term, this inversion of control. Inversion, inversion of control. So this, this is the, this is the like um, uh, traditional straightforward control. So I'm in charge because I take the data and I give you the data. So I drive the car. I know which way to go. But in this case, on the first line, I don't know which way to go. I in, the control is inverted, so I give you the, the, the object, and you decide. You will call my object. You will call, you know, me because I give you here whatever it is. It could be me. It could be this temperature, or something. So this is a more preferred way, I believe. Maybe you know, many people criticize me for saying this is inversion of control, but I do believe it is. But I've heard many times people saying that inversion of control is more about frameworks when you write the web framework and then you let the framework do the uh, taking something from the view into the controller something on a larger on, on a higher level of abstraction like something about architecture but I, it doesn't uh, to me it doesn't seem right i think inversion of control deep inside the principle is that instead of uh giving the object what it needs we give it another object where this guy can take what it needs what it needs, when it needs, when and what it needs. But back to encapsulation. So back to encapsulation. Encapsulation problem is, as some some writers, some authors say, encapsulation is more like David West. I quote David on, the, on my blog post. Uh, he said that encapsulation in his book. He said that encapsulation is a discipline more than a real barrier. And also he said that uh, that the integrity of an object, not very often, very seldom, like only sometimes, is being protected in absolute, in any absolute sense. So he's saying that no matter how much we try, and not we, but how much the language tries, it's hard to prevent people from doing this. So it's not possible really to protect the degrees here. The degrees will still jump out. Programmers make these mistakes. And it's not just, it's not, you know, the mistakes which are easily to, um, to classify as mistakes. They are not really functionality mistakes. If I go for, you know, if I ask right now a hundred programmers about this code and ask them what's wrong with this, like show, show the, the, the group of programmers, show this code, and ask them, do you see any any problems here? I think the majority of them will say, no, I don't see any problem with this line. It seems like logical that the temperature, if I remove this, like specifically like this, if I remove this, then they will say, no, it's all right. That's fine, it looks good. Because, you know, degrees is here, then we use the degrees. And yes, when we use degrees, we we use it the way we want it. And this is the problem, I think. This is the problem, that we let our users use our data any way they want. So we have no restriction in our programming languages on the usage of our data after we give this data to a client. Inside the class, the data is our data, so it's our territory. We can do whatever we want with the data. But the moment data escapes the object, we lose control and, and no programming language, in my, to my knowledge, no programming language will say that, hey, here you, you're being too free about my data. Like, why are you making any arithmetic operations with my data? It doesn't sound right. Why didn't you ask me to tell you how many degrees left till the water starts boiling? Why are you doing why are you manipulating with my data i gave you the data the way you asked and now don't touch it just use it once and forget it that will be ideal object-oriented design 
you take my data, you use it once when you need it, and then you throw it away. So the longer you keep the data in your hands, the, the more manipulations you make with the data I return to you, the bigger the problem for the design, the less maintainable is the design. That's my bottom line of this webinar. So here is arithmetic operation. Here is even more, even bigger problem because you take my data and then you give it to somebody who I don't know who it is and what's going to happen there. And most probably this body will save it into the, some, some attribute maybe, or maybe do many, many manipulations with my data. It's not good. It makes design less solid, less uh, cohesive. The coupling increases. So now my class the temperature is coupled with so many other places. The data goes there and then you make many, many manipulations there with this data. And that means that we depend on each other so much. So it's better to decrease this coupling by, I think this is the way forward, is somehow inventing the instrument, the mechanism inside the programming language, which would prohibit people to do this. Manipulate with the data after they after the data is uh, is out. Does it make any sense? Okay, some of you are asking questions. I'm going to answer, try to answer them in just a few minutes. So my final bottom line, my suggestion is in the programming language. That's that's what I suggested in the blog post. How about we calculate the amount of situations which I just described? Like how, not the amount of situations, the, the distance between this moment when T, when the degrees is jumping out. This is the place where it's boom, escaping the object. And then to the, to the arithmetic operation. Here the distance is one. So here's my data, boom, arithmetic operation. The distance is one. If you make more, for example, you say like this then probably the distance is two. So first you use my data together with the number 100 and then you use it together with the number five. So now the distance is two. For example, you put this one and do, uh, for example, uh, you convert it to float. That's the distance three. So you take the data, you, you compare it with 100 then you increment it by five and then you convert it to float or three. So the distance is three. And the longer the distance, the worse is the design. And if we go through all our code, for example, in Java, we go through all our code and calculate these numbers, like the distance somehow, I don't know how, if you, maybe you can think about this and uh, uh, maybe you can think about this and create some sort of a plugin or maybe tool for Java, which will actually look at the Java code and calculate this metric and say the distance is, and then the number. That would be awesome. I don't know how to do it exactly in, in, in Java. Maybe you can invent the method, but this number I believe is a interesting number to, to know. And if we, for example, uh, make it like a, make like a threshold and say like number three is the maximum. So when you take the data out of the method, then you can make only three manipulations with the data and then you have to drop it. So you cannot hold my data for so long. You can hold it only into three, like make three steps, three operations with the data and then drop the data. That would be, that would be interesting. Or maybe you can calculate the average number over all application. Like let's say we calculate all these distances and then we say the maximum, the peak is like a 10 or 15, which is too bad. And the average is 2.7, for example, which is okay. So we have a number of characteristics on this number. So we can make you, may, maybe we can make some analysis because I think this is the only way, in my opinion, this is the only way to actually do something with encapsulation. Because if you look at the Java code we write right now, look at the, uh, the real Java code, you can see that this is a very typical scenario. You just calculate something, take it. And sometimes it's not even integer. Sometimes it could be a class here. It could be an object here, a more complex object. Like integer is quite primitive. You know, in Java it's primitive object, but in other languages it's just normal object. 
but there could be something even more complex and still i believe it's not a, it's it's the same so if you take something from me i generate it for you then use it and drop it don't hold it for too long that's what i think is i know the better not the you know I, in my opinion it it could be an idea to to try to try to use so let me now read your questions and see what you think about this uh, the first one this one about celsius would be only helpful if we need a get degrees in fahrenheit because then we are encapsulating a formula that converts yes of course that's a good comment so of course this one get degrees in celsius which i suggested earlier like this one will be um, uh, celsius will only be helpful if you have more of this like get degrees in fahrenheit get degrees in something else so it is it is like david west is saying it is art basically it's the responsibility of the maker of the creator of the temperature class how to make how to make it so protective so that not too much jumps out because if you just returns the degree you throw away too much semantic out so what goes out has so much meaning inside so it's difficult to uh, to you know to 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 deliver it together with the with what you deliver you need maybe probably super long names of classes or objects something like this um now a comment about inter inversion of control okay ioc means that an object should get prepared dependencies from something don't create and configure the dependency by its own mm, uh, object should be pre should get prepared dependencies from something it shouldn't create isn't it dependency ejection you're talking about so you're saying that dependencies should be injected into the object instead of the object makes dependencies but i think this is dependency injection and version of control is a little bit something else again i'm on these two terms well in de dependency injection i know for sure what it is but ioc it's something which i understand my way I actually have a blog post about that so go on my blog search for IOC you will see my opinion about the inversion of control which may be different from what the books are telling you uh, next one the problem I see is unnecessary encapsulation kind of like making a house out of Swiss cheese that would be a nice house uh, unnecessary encapsulation in my opinion the more encapsulation you have the better in general the more your objects keep inside the less they expose the less methods i i was saying it in so many places the smaller your the smaller the interface of your object the better if your object exposed two methods it's a great object four methods it's still a good object if it's 10 methods it's not a good object if there are 25 methods it's a terrible object you don't you rewrite it and of course you don't expose any data in a naked form like public attribute so in order to design a class in order to design a class with four or less methods then you need to encapsulate you know a lot if you want all of your classes be like this of course if you just design primitive classes with small with a few few methods and then you're going to have a large class with a hundred methods you don't actually solve any problems but if you if you aim for your code the target which sounds like all my objects have to be small with small interfaces you inevitably will encapsulate a lot a lot of semantics a lot of information a lot of data so internals of your objects will be larger than the public interface let's put it this way and that means encapsulation so if you put it the other way around and say i don't like encapsulation then your objects will be very open they will have many interfaces well many sorry many methods they will show too much to the public and they will not have too much inside like this one look this one is not doing any cap any calculation inside the, the, the arithmetic this line this can this uh, this formula is not encapsulated into the class into this temperature object so the temperature object is very thin it's very small just get in get out that's all no functionality inside the functionality stays outside and that's not good this is very bad when the functionality stays outside of the of the of the object because it belongs to nobody and that belongs to uh, and it will have to be rewritten again and again when we want to uh, to use the same feature somewhere else 
Encapsulation makes code reuse very effective. So I'm all for encapsulation. Uh, okay, there's a boiling point of water. It's not the starts boiling, it's already boiling. That's my mistake, sorry. Uh, next one. That's a good question. Does EO language, which we design, develop right now, have such mechanism for restricting data usage? Yes, that's that's why I'm making the webinar. Yes, we we have we have this we we will have. Well, right now in the current version it doesn't. Right now it's still we are still in prototype, but we are designing the language the way that this restriction will be easy, uh, will be very easy to incorporate there. So we will have this, probably EO language will be the first language which will have this, uh, this mechanism of restricting, restricting data uh, abuse. <laughs> Not just use, but abuse when you use it the way we don't want it to use. So we will control how you use what we give you. So I give you something and then the language will follow the, the, the track the paths, track the, the usage scenario and catch you at some point and say, no, you're doing too much. We didn't allow you to... Uh, to use this date, this object, this this the um, this output which we gave you, in such a in such a um, uh, extensive way. Uh, next question: Does a decorator chain contribute to the distance? So if we if we I think yeah, it's a good question. So what if we uh, take the data from here, for example, and instead of uh, doing it like this, we instead of plus five, we do new. Uh, temperature as uh, float, for example, or as uh, as text, right? That's a pretty good idea. So we have text here, we'll have number here, and then instead of using the number, we say as text, and then probably here we put S, and then it's going to be printed something nice here. So this encapsulation, I think, this decoration, I think, still uh, a problem. We still uh, use the data outside. I think this, this decoration should be at this level, at this level, when we prepare the data for you. I believe so, I'm thinking right now. Yeah, I think so, because uh, inside this decorator, you're still gonna use manipulations with the data. You will have to print it you will have to, to deal with it only some way, which only you know, only you know this way. So it's much better to, to put this decorator here, somewhere here. So my answer is yes. Yeah, there's a good comment. The class temperature is wrong. If degrees is not defined and call get degrees, it will fail. Well, it's not gonna fail. It's gonna be probably you know what's gonna be so this class is not wrong because it's integer right if you know Java people will tell me what's going on because this is like this so by default Java you can skip this and if you you know if you skip it it's exactly the same like this so by definition by by default comparing to C in C if you compare this to C then in C we don't know what's gonna be here it can be any random number which is not guaranteed so zero is not a guarantee there Java introduced a guarantee for primitives. So they in Java you know that there's gonna be zero for sure. Which was a which was an achievement actually. I remember when we were we were moving from C to from, from C and C to Java, that was an achievement for us. Because, because in, in C you always have to when you create a new piece of piece of data in memory, then you basically nobody gonna clean it for you. But Java does this cleaning for you. So this class is not is not wrong. It would be more wrong if you do it like this. Yeah, if you use uh, the class here, because in this case, guess what? You know what's there? No. But still not wrong. So get degrees is still gonna work, but it will return no. So everything is everything is cool, I believe. Well, correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe I'm a little bit rusty on Java, but I think that's how it works. Uh, I think if we prevent data change out of class scope, then we go in more complexity somehow. I mean, that costs more and more, which may lead to another problem in terms of expendability and expensiveness. I don't know. 
It seems to me that uh, you're right. I think yes, if we, if we, you know, uh, encourage or prohibit the extensive use of the data of, of our, uh, not let's not say only data, but output. So we have some output and we prohibit people from using this output in a, in a, in a very extensive way. So we ask them, no, 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 don't do it. Instead, ask me. I am the I'm the creator of this output. So if you need this output to look different, then come to me and I will make my class more uh, more uh, more suitable for you somehow. Uh, I think in this case we will have rest we will have more problems for class designers. They will think more. They will say sometimes sometimes it's too much. So you we have so many clients and I cannot satisfy all the demands of this of this uh, of these uh, clients. And in this case, I think that the, the, the hierarchy of classes of objects will become more complex and more uh, thoughtful, which is probably going to be expensive for for programmers. But for users, for the entire maintainability of the code, there will be advantages. Um, another one: as programmers doing more work upfront to have less maintenance work later should be an attractive proposition. Yeah, I think so. It's exactly my point. Yeah, we do more work before to make our life easier later. Uh, maybe we can use another question. Maybe we can use some static analysis to detect these leaks and maybe calculate distance. Yes, that's exactly my suggestion for this webinar. So think about this. Maybe we can create, maybe you can create some static analyzer which will go through Java or Python or C++ code and calculate these distances. And then build a build this build a, a, a report, and then by this report you can set some threshold and say number ten is too much for us for our project. Or number uh, the average number of one point five is the maximum threshold we can actually tolerate. I believe it's possible. Um, another comment: I think we need more simple methodology that even the laziest of developers can follow. I'm not actually suggesting methodology, any methodology here. I'm suggesting basically one simple metric. Well, not simple, but one, one metric. Maybe it's simple. Uh, how these developers you're referring to, like these uh, laziest developers, uh, how they can, how they're going to like this idea of uh, don't touch my data, don't touch my objects too much. I think it's it's also a question of uh, our education of our uh, habits of our uh, best practices which we use and if we used to treat objects as primitive producers of what we need and then we are those who decide what to do with the output then yes we are too lazy to go into these objects and to make them more powerful and more uh, advanced. So we say, no, whatever, we stay in charge, like I, sh like I showed you with this code. So I'm in charge. So I want to be in charge here. So I get the degrees. If I necessary, I'm going to add 100 here. So I am in charge. I am in charge. So these are, this is the mentality we have right now of most programmers. So don't trust objects. That's what most programmers think right now, which is wrong. But they think we don't trust objects. We better. I even I even had I don't remember the webinar, but I had an article about that. Not a webinar, an article about interfaces. And somebody told me a few years ago that I don't like uh, using interfaces. I don't like use uh, interfaces which are then in, in implemented by uh, by certain classes. I want to use classes directly. That's a, a one programmer told me a few years ago. He said that I prefer using classes because I know what's there in the class. When I use interfaces, I don't know exactly what's the implementation, so it's hard for me to you know click the click the right uh, name in my ID and go right into the class and see the functionality there. So I don't trust the classes. That was exactly his point. I don't trust classes. I want to, I don't trust how they will implement the interface. I want to be able to go right into the implementation and see what's there. That's the mentality of modern programmers, I think. Very often people think like this. 
So they don't think in an object-oriented way. They, they don't think that there should be layers of architecture. There should be decoupling, mecha the mechanism of decoupling between objects. And it's good that you don't know what's there. It's good. It's not bad. It's good that you don't see how the function is, how the functionality is implemented. But in his eye, in his eyes, it's bad. So the same is here. So I am in charge. I don't know how the robot will, will will treat my temperature here. Like look in this line. Like how exactly the robot will decide what's in the temperature? It's 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 scary, right? <laughs> so it's better for me to do it right here. Just take the degrees, calculate, make the right decisions, and then pass these guys. Only, oh, again, some number, just primitive number. Just don't let them think. It's a micromanagement. <laughs> just like we like micromanagement in management, we don't trust our subordinates, we don't trust the, our, uh, our colleagues. We just tell them, do it this way. Just stay next to them and check exactly how they do it, step by step, instead of just checking the result. No, we check the step, the, the same here. We want to check it, like we want to make the calculations our own, which is, I think mm, the, the problem, the mindset issue, which we need to solve. Uh, another question, uh, the nature of temperature is about being a data. It's not really a thing that has useful behavior for us. Don't you think we should not create a temperature class from the beginning? Uh, no, it's a primitive example with the temperature. It's a very primitive example. So maybe you're right in this case. Well, not 100% because still, if you if you if this application is about uh, measuring temperature and about controlling, for example, uh, some um, some manufacturing processes where actually the temperature is one of the core uh, elements of uh, of the reality, then in this case, temperature will be quite, you know, quite big class and quite powerful. There will be uh, many things inside many it's going to be powerful class but in this primitive example maybe you're right in this case maybe temperature is not not maybe but for sure it's not a good example for um, for a proper class so my mistake uh, next one the problem with that it's uh, sorry it's not answering to me uh, Another comment, class temperature is a raw data and it's not possible to know upfront how this data will be used. Thus, we cannot incorporate all use cases in this class. That's a very good question, actually. And I think that the right answer here is that we need to create decorators for the temperature. So we make the temperature quite primitive and then we make... Uh, You know what is decorator, right? Something like this. Oh, it doesn't matter. And then we use it like this. very sketchy example I'm not saying it's exactly accurate but the idea is that you have an object which is quite primitive powerful enough at its level of abstraction like temperature it knows something about degrees and some and, and that's it then you decorate it with another object which knows more about celsius then you decorate it with another object which knows more about the situation with the water then you decorate it with another object which knows more about printing the, the, the information on the string, on the console, and so on and so forth. So you're constantly decorating and decorating. In this case, I believe we should not uh, count it as a distance and we should not blame and punish programmers 
for making this change of decorators in this case because we had the question about decorators just a few minutes ago and that was in my opinion bad example this one is a good example when we decorate the core entity so we have the temperature and then we make it st it's still a temperature but it becomes more powerful a more powerful temperature of course putting the all functionality into temperature and making the temperature know everything about about what's going on with the with the water for example that would be nonsense the class will grow it will be a very large uh, very very big the interface will be huge but we have this decorating idea so we just make our entity bigger and bigger and bigger the language has to understand the decorating is not the same as using so using the data using the output is here when you use it and then when you take it then print f actually use what's coming out of there but this decorating is not using it's still within the borders of the of the object so boiling water has this temperature in celsius as an internal element and we shouldn't treat it as escaping so we shouldn't treat the data which will inevitably move from temperature in celsius to this class it's, it's going to happen you know they will exchange with the with the output but we shouldn't treat this as the same operation as we have here here the the, the relationship between print f and left and this method left left means how many left till boiling so the relationship between this guy and this guy are not the same as the relationship between these two guys that's my point and in eo language we have this distinct the, the, the difference we do understand this relationship differently uh, uh, let me wrap it up because we're running already out of time uh, the question is so by the title of the webinar do you mean encapsulation enforcement is dead uh, yeah i think i think encapsulation is dead as i am saying for example continuous integration is dead so it means it doesn't work the idea is okay but it's dead as a in practice so it, it, it the practically if you look what's going on in practice then we don't have it it's it's dead you know it's time to bury it so if you look around you have no encapsulation around if you look at java code which we write we do not have encapsulation that's it we just have an idea which we know we read about encapsulation in the books we teach encapsulation in schools and then we go into practical programming and there is no encapsulation in most cases so that's why i'm saying it's bad but of course the idea is uh, like i said on a on a very conceptual level if you read Grady Butch again, Grady Butch, I quoted the guy, and uh, he's saying very good things about encapsulations, which is hard to understand. Uh, I can quote it again. It's the process of hiding all the secrets of an object that do not contribute to its essential characteristics. What are the secrets and what are the essential characteristics? I don't know. Nobody knows. It's like this uh, single responsibility principle. It's a principle about nothing. It's a good principle, we read it, we teach it, we, we teach it in schools, but we don't know what it means. Like, what is single responsibility principle? Responsible for what? Who is re like, how can you actually measure? Am I single responsibility? My responsibility is single or already not single? It's it, the same here. So encapsulation as a formula is not alive. It's it was it was suggested but was never implemented in programming languages and and making attributes private is not encapsulation because anybody can do this this thing and boom there is no encapsulation and most people do it like this exactly like that so encapsulation is in my opinion sort of dead maybe we need to make it alive again and I'm suggesting how to do it. I'm suggesting to introduce this metric of the coupling distance. And then probably encapsulation will be alive again. Because we're going to catch it by numbers. You can't control if you can't measure. You know this formula. So if you can't measure any, like what you're trying to control, you can't control it. The same here. 
Okay, one last question and we're gonna finish. Uh, okay, it's not a question, it's just a thankful, just a goodbye, goodbye message. Um, uh, if I understand correctly, every object should be producing something, consuming something, but not replicating. As in, I have to ask the producer for the temperature, not intermediate objects. Yes, sort of. So you should be the consumer of results from another object, but you shouldn't make you shouldn't yeah modify or work with the with what what they give you they give you the final product so don't try to uh you know to manipulate too much you do money you will manipulate it's not possible to imagine the real code where you just take the uh, take the outputs and never touch them just immediately just print them to console and call it a day that's not going to happen so you will inevitably do some modifications, some manipulations with them. But the amount of those manipulations, the, the, they should be minimized as much as possible. Just like with cohesion, just like with coupling, this, these two ideas, they were very uh, high level, introduced, I don't know, 40 or 50 years ago, a long time ago. It's a very bright idea, like let's make our modules as much decoupled as possible so they don't depend too much on each other that's a very bright idea but how exactly it happens how how it works in java exactly how do we measure coupling and how do we make it smaller that's the questions uh, this question has in my opinion has no uh, ex exact answer there are ideas there are um, uh, proposals how to measure but no we don't know like look at your code do you know the level of coupling you don't. Do you know the level of cohesion in your Java or C sharp or dot or I don't know, Python objects? You don't know. Nobody knows. The same for encapsulation. Do you know where, what is the level of encapsulation? You don't know. But I suggest to know this. We can't do it. Anyway, that was the that was the story. Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming. Um, I hope I told you something new today. Maybe you can. I try to encourage you actually to create the plugin, to create the static analyzer. Think about this. And maybe you, one of you can create it. So see you next time. Uh, we try to do these webinars every month. And uh, thanks for staying with me. And sorry for the noise again, for the background noise. Thanks. Bye-bye.